What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of another Disney podcast. That's right. We're back. We're here. We're smiley. We're happy. I got Dave. I got Rob. What's up, fellas? What's up? Hello, ADP family. (laughs) Hey, don't steal my don't steal my thing. I'm not going to push any buttons today because it's always the wrong one. I'm just going to. It's all sound effects Dave, provided my, by Rob. You push my buttons Brandon. every day. <laughs> that's that's the that's the funny part about it. What's, What's up, up guys? I missed you. Happy summer. Happy summer. Summer is yeah. Great. I bet Brandon's over some summer. God, Did y'all's hot. heat wave chilled it's out. So no. Well, today oh, it's man. 90, so it's like winter time. Yep. I'll tell you. It's not like winter like, time, but this weekend it is supposed to be uh I think ninety-seven on Saturday and ninety-eight on Sunday and ninety-eight on Monday. Uh see, I don't even look at those anymore. I always look at the real feel. The real <laughs> feel brutal. The real feel. The real feel. Yeah, I don't Let even, me, I don't even play with real the real feel. one anymore. To me, like we had a real feel like yesterday of eighty six and I almost passed out with a, like I was like, What? I'm gonna go get a jacket. <laughs> I'll tell you, I live on Long Island, New York, and I don't know, like Monday, it was like 95 or so. It was like hot and humid. We went to the pool and yesterday and today I went outside. It was like, it's chilly out. Like, I agree with you. It was like, seriously, it's like a breeze. And it was weird. It's August. I don't know. And then Rob was like, oh, it was 89. Yeah, it's pretty breezy today. It's pretty nice. The fam just left to go to the beach without me. So yay, yay, family time. (laughs) (laughs) Too funny well you're with our adp family that's right and they're probably somebody could be listening to this at the beach like i'm not hey okay party that's what we got like so it. rob rob since we last met i heard that you took an exciting adventure yeah did you go so, on an excursion did you go on an adventurous excursion if you're watching i got my uh reese's peanut butter cup shirt on we did a non-disney park believe it or not it was Bizarre what? to be in a non Disney park. We went to Hershey Park, which was cool. So, kind of came the realization that we are not a roller coaster family because they have like oh, 12 no. of them or something like that. And we they didn't got go a on lot any of them at Hershey Park. Yeah, we didn't go Come on any. On, they, well, you didn't go on any of them? <laughs> not one. <laughs> my son, my, my son's, uh, he is 13 now. And um, my wife put him on Velocicoaster when we went last year to universal oh, no. and he went on every roller coaster both parks and ever since he has not wanted to go on a roller coaster <laughs> he oh, was a God. changed man so yeah, yeah i so. mean that's a that's a heck of a one to indoctrinate someone on so <laughs> yeah definitely so but uh so, yeah it's it's four or five hours to hershey park we we did an overnighter hershey's kind of cool because i'm going to talk about hershey a second if that's all right guys um if you go the night before they let you go in and preview the park so they give you two free hours if you have a ticket for the next day which was neat so we got there we and we ate at the um chocolatier or something like that the 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 high-end chocolate restaurant it's kind of in the park out of the park so we got there mid-afternoon we ate an early dinner there and then six o'clock we went into the park till eight o'clock and we looked around we went on some rides and um we saw the water park so they have a water park a zoo and a theme park there. So it was pretty interesting, pretty fun. We, we, had, we had fun. We had a blast. They have a really cool ride be, called um, the Hirsch, um Reese's uh, Cup Fusion. And it was a combination of um, Buzz Lightyear Blast and Toy Story Mania. It had the screens, but practical stuff. It was really cool. I really liked that. That was my favorite. Huh. Uh, that was my favorite thing. And it, the, there's like the evil mint guy. You got to get the evil mint. But that was cool. But the cool thing is, and I, I know Dave was going to try to come up, and we we're supposed to do this. And February opened up the Disney 100 um, Exposition at um, the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on the way back, it was like two and a half hours to Philly, then two and a half hours home. So it was kind of right in the middle of coming home. So we went. Um, you could either buy a ticket to the museum, or you could. Um, you know, you could buy a nighttime pass just for Disney. It wasn't it wasn't bad. Twenty five bucks if you just want the Disney portion of it. And we went and um, we had. I, it was funny because I went to buy 
five o'clock on they started five o'clock was sold out 5 30 was available i went to buy that that sold out so obviously the nighttime stuff was popular so got there at six i think it closed at eight okay so uh it wasn't bad you still had two hours to do it but it was pretty damn cool you know i thought dave um went to d23 before but it's kind of like and and it's kind of a lot of the stuff i feel was at d23s but um they had different sections 10 different sections um parks movies animation soundtracks everything You're, you're you're gonna celebrate 100 years of disney um i did buy the book which was oh dang so, yeah i don't buy books much my son wanted the book so we're like you know what we'll get the book pretty damn awesome and okay what's in it yeah yeah what's in so, it so it literally has every single thing that was at the attraction so like literally like they had the animatron like if you're watching the video you could see some of the oh, stuff wow. on there. the animatronic board they have this is a president from the hall of presidents they had lincoln's animatronic wow board. they had um they had the car from um the matterhorn they had the ship from peter pan like an old older one. and they, it was it was just pretty awesome they had star wars a little section they had a little section for marvel um but they even had like Disney nature, which I really like too, but. Oh yeah. Those, those were looking, great. Yeah. But and they had a lot of theme park stuff. It was, it was pretty cool. Here's the star Wars. They had a full size stormtrooper. They had a full oh, size. Cool. They had the real BB eight that like they, I think they use it a press and stuff like that. Uh, they had hand solos dice. They had a porg. <laughs> oh, this was cool too. They had the, the model from uh 20,000 leagues under the sea. So. This was from the original movie, which was kind of cool, from 1954. 11 foot special effects filming model of the Nautilus. So, wow, was kind of anything Mary favorite. Poppins. That's my favorite. Um, yeah, they did. Disney they had film. um, they had the horse, like the carousel horse from mm. Mary Poppins, which was really cool. So, question you know, they... was that the one that was in the queue? You think from a uh, member of the great movie ride? It was always in glass. Oh, queue? yeah, you know, I what? bet that's Maybe, what it yeah. was. It was already on the East Coast, so it was probably easy to schlep it up to Probably, PA. yeah, yeah. So they had a bunch of sculptures, and I don't know, it was like it was just really cool. I really liked it. So, but spoiler alert: it closes Saturday. So this was literally the last two weeks of the <laughs> of the thing, and then it goes to England. It, it opens in England yeah. in September. So uh, I would highly recommend it. You know, if you could sneak down there, here is is this the one? Yeah, that was yeah, that was it. I'm okay, sure. Okay, that's the queue. So. But uh, yeah, I I loved it. It was great. Like, I didn't. It was a little crowded, unfortunately, and it definitely took us. I filmed it. I filmed. I'm gonna be putting out on my channel, um, like a like an hour. Well, it was about forty minute, forty minute uh, vlog that I did. So, I just like filming stuff and everything. But um, yeah, it was cool. It was really. I'm really glad we did it. Uh, I was hoping Dave was gonna make it up here, but we never did it, and it just. Last minute decision to go to Hershey Park. We said, you know what? Let's do that on the way back. I did get a hat, which is kind of cool. Little merch. There it is. The... Oh, yeah. And yeah, it was on yeah. sale because next week it's <laughs> it's closing. So they're trying to get rid of stuff. So They didn't want to ship it to England. Exactly. There's my thing. And my son got a little Bluetooth speaker, which is kind of cool. A little Mickey oh, Bluetooth speaker. And we got the book. And uh, that was it. It was really cool. Though. I really enjoyed it. Um I haven't been there since I was, I haven't been to Philly since I was like 12, 13, I think was the last time I went there. And the, the, the Franklin Institute's famous for the giant heart you can walk through and the really cool statue of Benjamin Franklin outside. So it was cool though. So I'm and, very happy and fi- Oh, in Philly, Philly, Philly. Gotcha. Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. That looked epic. Yeah. Matthew and I, like we originally talked, we were going to go to like, uh, we were going to like, take the train mm. and and do it that way but we didn't go <laughs> <laughs> life got in the yeah. way <laughs> life life definitely got in the way but that looks cool was that at hershey or where no, was this in philadelphia yeah hershey oh, okay. is about <clears throat> it's kind of like in the middle of Pen- 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 well you live in a huge state too but I-, I grew up in new jersey which is kind of a small state new york's pretty big but P, you know pittsburgh i think's like seven hours eight hours from us and this was about three four hours hershey and in philadelphia is on a good day it's like an hour and a half for me so kind of in between so oh. 
Yeah, wow. it was funny. We got lost. It was confusing. We kind of got lost, and we saw the Rocky Steps, which was great. So we saw the Rocky statue and the Rocky Steps, and my kids are like, "Who is Rocky?" <laughs> and then we went. They to moved that the now. The statue is now like, is it off yeah. to the side or in like a little park area? Yeah, well, it was originally in the Spectrum. It was their arena in Philadelphia, and you know, from the movie Rocky Three, they had the cheesy statue, and then you know, it was in the movie, and then they had it there forever. They had a couple statues by this and then they tore down the spectrum and when they did that <laughs> yeah if you see the actual rocky steps it's an art museum and then it's right to the right of the rocky steps the statues there it's a big it's a big attraction there was probably like yeah. 50 people online trying to get pictures with it so it was pretty yeah amazing. i bet philadelphia okay um philly yeah <laughs> I, i'm I, I didn't go anywhere exciting this summer <laughs> <laughs> nothing. So I got nothing. Nothing. I got nothing. Brandon, what do you got? I got nothing. <laughs> oh, I mean, I haven't I haven't gone there yet, but I am excited that I did get invited by one of our friends, one of our gracious cast member friends. I do get to uh preview the new Moana Journey of Water attraction at Epcot. Uh as we've that talked nice. about on the show, they are uh they've done preview cast previews they started that this last month and and next month so i'm pretty excited i get to go check it out i'm looking forward to checking it out without the usual crazies um i've seen a lot of video on it and it to me it just looks like a giant splash pad um (laughs) hey it's a really expensive one (laughs) it's a really expensive splash pad that took five years to make but hey we're going to go and we're going to uh, we're going to enjoy it uh, from what I've seen. It's very interactive and it encourages guests to interact and work together to make water do things. So I'm excited to see what it really is about. Um, I've read some things that are is like, hey, it's not something you would come to Disney World for, but it's yeah. a nice place to go. There's trees, which we, we've done reimagineer it a couple of times and we've talked about how places like Epcot and and other parks need trees and shade uh, and things like that for the hot summertime. So this has trees. And so it may be a nice, cool place with water and mist and things like that to, to take a break during the day. So I'm looking, looking forward to it. I don't know how much you guys have seen on our favorite site blog, Mickey and, and, you know, some of those other sites that have previewed it already, but do you guys have any thoughts about, is that my main question is is this going to bring anything to epcot and do you think this attraction belongs in epcot oh no and no <laughs> okay yeah, cool. everybody Ex- yeah expound all expand. right good night <laughs> yes rob expand i don't know i'm, I'm I, I got mixed feelings about it if it's one tenth as cool as the movie what the water does it might be cool. Like, look what they did with like uh, Journey to Imagination with those fountains and stuff like that. That was awesome. You know what I mean? Like when I was a kid, I was blown away by it. So if it's, I just thought of this now. Like if it's like that, like if it's kind of like cool, like Journey to Imagination, like those dancing fountains and water and cool stuff. And like I, I, I be honest, I know zero about it. So, but like I said, if it's if it's a little bit cool, I'm all for it. But like. I don't know. Is it that's the big that's going to be the big Tiana and the Moana attraction? Like that's it for like the next year? Mm, I don't know. I don't think it's going to bring anyone to the parks, but it's a cool little added thing. But I don't know. And it doesn't belong in Epcot. You, you guys know me. I'm an old school retro Epcot Communicore guy. I love Communicore. Like you know, it's just, it yeah. kind of just sat there and nothing no one really cared about it and everything. So like it disappearing, I, I guess it doesn't matter. There was, like, I, I be honest with you, I can't even tell you. I, I remember one attraction in an opening day attraction that it was like the shortest attraction ever. Like showed you the computers and it was the, um, um, the Reuter computer song or something like that. Like, yeah. Remember that attraction yeah. that, that was yeah. in there and like it closed after like a year, like it did nothing. And they, they had some like, I don't know. They had some kind of like, um, like World Fair kind of attractions and displays and stuff like that. But Epcot hasn't been that for a while, so I, I guess you know, symmetry wise too. You look at it; it just looks weird. Like there's a building here, and it it just looked beautiful the way 
Spaceship Earth was there, and then the Communicores came out, and the way you can go in between. And they, they made some stuff in there. It was kind of cool. Some gift shops and restaurants and the meet and greet and stuff like that. That kind of made it into something. But I don't know. Does this seem like a good thing? I guess Florida's hot, so it's going to cool you off, I guess. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Dave? Um, I'm okay with it being an Epcot, like because I think I've had to succumb to the idea of of burying, you know, like retro Epcot. Right? It's just I think it'll have to live on in like merch and shirts, and yes. so like it doesn't mean I'm happy about it, but. I, I will always asso- associate the front part of Epcot with like learning, right? That's what I remember. Yeah. Like people that grew up in Florida, I'm sure would get, you know, you could go to like on class field trips if you live close enough to drive for the day. And because it was an actual learning opportunity. So there is going to be that learning aspect to it. And I think that's why they, I mean, when they looked at everything, okay, we're going to redo the front <laughs> section of Epcot. What can we do and kind of ish keep it themed, but we need to do something that like has got some new IP in there. And so obviously Moana fits the new IP and they made it to talk about the journey of water from like condensation to rain to ocean. So I, I get it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm an old school guy too. So I, I don't know where else you can put it, but I think I've given up on Disney of like putting stuff in places that make sense. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so, so. <laughs> just kind of, yeah, man. I don't know. Like, it's so I, yeah, I mean, I like, yeah, yeah, it, this is not like, uh, I mean, it didn't work out for me. I didn't care enough because I don't have like that tied to the films, but like, I remember Matthew, like, he got a, um, what do you get him when you're, like an advanced screening, that's not what you do for a ride, but I can't think of the actual phrase. Pre- and preview. Like, and a like, preview. Yes, he got a he got a past member preview to go see, like to go do the galaxies ride, and he did it. Like I get that, right? I mean, there's like the popularity of those movies. It's a roller coaster and it's attraction. This is kind of like a walkthrough, could be a cool place to cool down. However, I'm more hopeful because they have an opportunity to do something really cool there at night. Like, so Rob, you were mentioning like if they do something cool with water, well, I hope they do something cool at night to bring that even more to life. Like some meaning like it does stuff at night that you can only experience. Like you go to Pandora during the day, you go at night. It's completely different. It doesn't even compare like, which is such a pain that that park closes so early and you hardly ever get any nighttime hours. That, section of the park is meant to be experienced at night so i'm hoping that they add something that makes it a do not miss like as you're exiting or at night so you know like i'm hopeful that they'll surprise us yeah i would love that area to interact with spaceship earth you know what i mean with that amazing like that was i've said this before on the show that was my favorite element of the 50th like the re lighting of spaceship earth the cool lights in the show and everything like that you could obviously you can see from in the front the side the back but Mm-hmm. Maybe they could do something more interactive in that, you know, in that area. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. We're looking I at mean, the map I before. Go ahead, Brandon, sir. No, I was, I was just gonna say, I agree. I think it's a, I think it fits in with the instructional, educational portion of Epcot. The problem I have is like this thing has kind of become the main attraction now of the front of Epcot. So, is it? is it enough of a draw to make it the main attraction of Epcot? Right. And I don't think that that's going to be the case. I think, I think you're going to walk through it once and you're going to be like, okay, that was cool. And then that's, you're done like that. You're not, it's not going to be like, I'm going to Epcot because I want to go back to journey of water. Like I don't, you know, and that's kind of how, for me, that's kind of how mission space is. Like I'm not going to Epcot to go to mission space because it's (laughs) awful. Uh, but True. I just I have a problem with it being the focus, right, of that area of the park. And so I think it really would do better in Animal Kingdom because it seems like that, like it, instead of where they're going to put uh, Zootopia or take care of Dino Land, that would be yeah. a great that would have been a great place for this attraction. And plus, it's always hot as Hades in Animal yeah, Kingdom. We went yeah. we we went on Sunday. We went 
couple days ago on Sunday and it was God awful hot in there. So it would, this would be a great thing to incorporate in there to bring a little coolness to animal kingdom, but I'm excited going back to the original point of this. I'm excited to go experience it. I love experiencing things, anything that Disney puts out. I love to experience, Mm. Uh, but you know, much like when I experienced Tron at a preview, I did it. It was great. It was fun while I did it, but I'm not clamoring and I'm not stressing myself out to experience it again. Mm. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's good. Now, if they can only get the play pavilion together, that'd be a nice balance, but can't believe it just stuff sits there forever. Like, like, like even like where um, Stitch was, I can't believe that's still empty. And like, I just, I don't understand. (laughs) Just put yeah. something there, you know what I mean? I guess that's what the Moana thing was just putting something there, but just filling it out. I don't know. Yeah, it definitely it definitely baffles me how long it takes. Like it shouldn't take this, it shouldn't take this long to build a forest with dancing water in it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's just the timelines that Disney has baffle me. Yeah, I don't understand. I think my landscaper could do a better job over there finishing up the area. So I just don't get it, though. Like, okay, finally, Moana's done. But, like, the rest of the area is not done. Like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't yeah. believe it's not going to be complete still. It's still going to be walking. Yeah. And obviously, so, they anticipated that because I think the only place you can enter and exit is over by the seas with Nemo. Yeah. So it's not like you, and I don't even know when, when it's completely finished if you're going to be able to exit that journey of water into the communicor or that other central hub that they're planning. Mm. So to me, I bet you're going to be able to exit, but it'll be walled off and you have to go in a walled off back to where you'll be started. So sorry. Yeah. To me, it would just be like, you can enter from the spokes of the wheel into the Moana journey of water area. And that would be the central part of that hub. You know, but to uh, me, yeah. like you said, it's off to the side. It's it's very weird, and they're planning on building this whole other garden slash statue house slash communicor plaza. That who knows when that's going to be done. Yeah. So it just seems very disjointed to me. See the way I see it, it's like I was. I'm kind of laughing because we went to Hershey Park and we went to the zoo, which was not much, but it said suggested path. Now, is this going to be a suggested path or is it eventually going to be like Brandon just said, you could just walk at it from any direction and it's, you just do what you want. I feel like it's going to stay suggested because you have to follow the journey, right? So like the water starts here. Hence the name. You got to follow the journey of water. (laughs) So that is why I think that that, I don't think you're going to be able to enter and exit just randomly into the attraction. So I, that's gonna to be me, a people eater like there's no way it's like, gonna be a people eater is that gonna be a line for that thing ever like even day one like i can't imagine like i don't know the thing the thing i'm worried about in the videos that i saw is if you look at the stuff so like the first thing there's if you've ever been on seven dwarfs mind train there's that water thing you know you can run your hand under the water and it plays musical notes kind of the same thing so and then you go to another station and you make the water jump like the fountains of imagination Mm. then you go to another station to me how long are people gonna stay at that spot am i gonna have to wait 20 minutes to run my hand underwater to make it sing a note because little billy is sitting there playing with it because i can that's a good point i can Uh. yeah what i can see is that parents just drop their children off in the journey of water (laughs) and sit on a bench and just let them go crazy. So that oh, like, they're going over to, to me, the festival. Come on. Exactly. Drink. How, how are we going to keep people moving through this experience? If it's just like a self guided tour, that's my concern. Yeah. And that's why I'm stoked to experience it without that happening. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Can't wait to hear about it, but you know, like, like look at um, over at universal minions, you know, the new minions thing, it's on a conveyor belt. People are standing. I wonder if that's going to be the future ride. Just like, not even get you're not even sitting on a ride you're just literally st- standing on a dot and getting get moved so that would be cool if <laughs> conveyor belts were in there i don't know <laughs> i'm thinking out loud here <laughs> um okay that's all i, I think we're, we're all i got I'm, about I'm, the I'm journey excited. of water i like excited. it so are they gonna have like a moana and uh you know 
meet and greet there too? Or is that going to move over there? Or I don't know. I wonder if they're going to. I don't. I don't know because she's in Animal Kingdom killing. right now. So at Bowie, yeah, that'd be neat. I don't know. Yeah, but like, like this is another. You know, when you saw Guardians, you had no clue what that ride was going to be because it's in a building. But this was like in right. the open. There's like three tents. Like there's nothing. Like there's not going to be any surprise. In my opinion the surprises are going to be very limited so like i yeah. think oh, no. the and, cool water effects are going to be cool but what else could they have done you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah so and i mean as long as you ride the monorail you can see what's going on like yeah, yeah exactly. it circles yeah, it's, the it's whole point. area <laughs> so exactly. it's not like they try to hide anything so i feel like we need to just tamper our expectations i found with disney stuff the less you get excited about it the more pleasantly surprised <laughs> so <it is>. true <laughs> so yeah. And I feel like Disney themselves try not to hype stuff up so much anymore. Like, yeah, I think they've there's, learned. There's not all these commercials about the amazing journey of water that opens fall of 2023. Like you used to Zero see that commercial. all the time, like yeah. opening fall 2023 or coming spring of 2020. Like you don't see anything about that anymore. Yeah, now it's really just billboards off I-4. That's really there's, where you yeah. see it. I mean, that's kind of yeah. and on social. That's social what I've media. noticed in all my trips. It's always like, oh, there it is. Or yeah, like advertising on a like vacation booking site or like Expedia, like that. All that they'll they'll have those little banner ads all. Over. But yeah, yeah. The biggest thing that I always see is like that. Like I remember when Pandora was coming, all those signs. Of course, I feel like they hyped Pandora a little bit. But that was worth it. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely worth yeah. it. I definitely remember seeing commercials for Pandora. Although, <laughs> although the asterisks for that should simply read, uh, "Park hours subject to change, not hardly ever going to be open at night." <laughs> <laughs> they did some stuff for Tron, some ads and stuff like that. I actually just saw an ad the other day for it. But they, nice. you're right though, they really didn't push. They don't really push anything anymore. So yeah, they push the much. entire experience. That's what they push. So that's yeah. right. Which is probably the right thing to do. So, oh, magic. I mean, it's you got to think about when it comes to commercials versus like search engine optimization, like you know, like targeted ads. Like that's a way more cost effective and reaches the right audience than just two million dollars Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. Have we uh, beat that horse? I think we beat think that so. horse to exciting. death. What? When are you going, Brandon? I'm sorry uh actually on my birthday september 17th get it get it it'll be a birthday get it. It, okay. it's a birthday thing Sweet. and it'll be amazing because there'll be the least amount of people there that you'll ever see ever correct and maybe it won't be 263 degrees maybe you know, i know we beat this to death but one more thing it's been in previews for cast members right it's it's technically working and open right it started this yeah. month, right? Right. Yeah, preview started beginning of this month, so um, and you're going August and September. September. Yeah, like what? When is this thing opening? <laughs> still, I'm telling you, like, it, they just drag like, out fall yeah. of 23. It's opening in fall of 23, Rob, and we've discussed that a lot. Fall could mean anywhere from August 1st to December 21st. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. It's crazy. I always forget about that. The week of Christmas, y'all, is still fall. <laughs> and by the way, still no hat box ghost either. So <laughs> who knows what's going on with that guy? Wow. I don't know. Yeah, he's there. He's there. He's behind a curtain. Don't look behind the curtain because he's there. But who knows when that's coming? Because the you know the Halloween you know that's scary nights happen. I, I was they closed it for a couple of days. I thought it was coming, but nope. Oh, you know we they closed we did it. Get the, we did get the pouring tea ghost. Did you guys see that? They put back that guy. I didn't, I didn't realize he was even gone, but in the final yeah, scene, in the, in the graveyard <laughs> scene, yeah, he's like, ha, 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 he's like pouring tea like in a thing. I went and saw the back. film. It was awesome. Yeah, it was I so fun. It. I, have not I mean, great it. throws to the film, obviously. I mean, to the ride, obviously, but... But if you are a if you are a Walt Disney World fanatic, it's clearly based on disneyland version mm, okay yeah the how i mean because it's in it's in it takes place in new, new orleans, orleans. Yeah. i don't want to give stuff away and you've got your house in walt disney world and you've got your house in disneyland it is 
one hundred percent based off the house, the exterior of the house yeah. in Disneyland. So you're not giving anything away because it's in the trailer. So yeah, okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I still I still want to go sneak and see it. So yeah, yeah I, I highly recommend it. It was fun. And I asked your opinion, obviously, because I was like, Dave, this is your favorite attraction in all of Disney. So I need to know your honest opinion. And he said it was good. So yeah, it was a lot. I it was bo- fun. It was really fun. It was it, it, it was funny. Like, I mean, Danny DeVito, like great casting choice. Oh, my gosh. And Rosario Dawson was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was Some cameos. It was, it was I don't want to. Someone ruined it for me, but I know there's a ca- couple cameos, but I don't want to say. Yeah. It, so. And the like the boy that plays the son, like tremendous. I mean, just very well cast, very well cast. But I'm sure it did horrible in the theaters because who cares unless that's your favorite ride. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay, Brandon, you talked about some things that leads perfectly into our topic. And um we actually got an email and I sent this to the guys. So Adam Kroll asked a question on one of our episodes. It was the frontier land needs some love episode. Thank you for (laughs) watching that because the episode probably needed some love. (laughs) Um, Adam Kroll said, I actually listened to the whole thing. It was good. I was an honor. Is reimagine it ever going to make a comeback? Adam, thank you for the question. I pulled the guys. They said, no, moving on. (laughs) That is not true. <laughs> we talked about it. I, it was actually like, so if you've been to our YouTube channel or even if you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, you can see there's like, we have a plethora of shows. And that one, I don't know why, that one was my favorite one that we did, I guess for the originality of it. Um, but it was hard when we first started off and Dave wanted to do 17 shows. It was just not, it was not feasible. And eventually we were like, oh my gosh, we're going to run out of ideas. But Brandon has said multiple times, well, we should do it like once a month or something like that. So Adam, to answer your great question, it will be coming back um, in, in limited form. Um, I think when we come up with a great idea for one, we'll run with it. But since you asked, we thought we would do for those of you who haven't please go and subscribe to that listen to it or watch it on our youtube channel to it's just called reimagineer it and that well i I guess we should start with this brandon tell them what is the premise of reimagineer it so the premise of reimagineer it if you hadn't listened to it or gone back to see it or just joined us we love all you new listeners and watchers but the the premise of reimagineer it is we take something at walt disney world it can be an attraction it could be a land, it could be a hotel, it could be anything. And we say, if we had unlimited resources and we had unlimited ideas, what would we turn it into? We've done such crazy things as we are re- reimagined the Jungle Cruise. We reimagined uh, the All-Star Hotels. We created a new hotel. Um, things like that. That we we even reimagined one time the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, right? <laughs> so we yes. we take things that could go away, and we decide what we would do with them. Now Dave yeah. is always fiscally conservative. Dave <laughs> is our fiscally conservative fella, and he's like, I would use existing structures, and I would just put up new signs. <laughs> <laughs> me on the other hand i'm bulldozing it on spending eight billion dollars so it was right. one of my favorite shows uh you know which way i would go to you by the way same yeah, as you <laughs> yeah exactly it was one of my favorite things to do we just kind of ran out of we went big at the beginning and <laughs> we focused on whole areas yeah. of the park instead of attraction so we kind of ran out of things so adam thank you for sending the email Yep. We are definitely going to do some more reimagineers. Yeah, I'm excited because I always ask for them, but we just don't do them. So. <laughs> we don't listen to Rob, See, so that's, that's the problem. <laughs> Adam emailed us. <laughs> we listen to Adam. Rob asks every week. We ignore Rob. I don't even know who Rob is. I'm not even sure how he got into this channel. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should introduce Rob. I don't know who he is. Okay, so in in celebration of Adam's question on our YouTube channel, we are going to devote the rest of this show of showing you what a reimagineer it looks like. 
and I picked one of the few areas left. <laughs> I just came across the guys were like, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? And I was like, well, Adam sent that question. Let's see if we do this. And so I don't even know what it's called, but like, I'm going to call it Epcot's hub. That's been under construction since uh, about three years after they opened the park. Um, so what is that? 1987, <laughs> something like that. Um, no, uh, it's, we just talked about Milan is ready to open. So right there behind spaceship earth, where the fountain used to be, what were they, what do they call it? The fountain of the world's a fountain of the, it had a special name. I don't remember. Was it tapestry of nations? Was that there it is? Like thank you. Or yeah. Because, because that area has been under construction since 1997. I, it's been so long since I've been there. So we, we kind of know what's happening there. We've looked at the, not the blueprint, but the, the web built blueprints, not the actual blueprints to know what to expect. <laughs> uh, it doesn't look great. <laughs> uh, if you like shade, it's going to be great. Um, if you like bushes and oxygen, you're in luck. Yes. If you like it's landscaping, it's your kind of yes. place. <laughs> It'll be good. So I was like, well, that doesn't look super exciting. And I know it's probably going to look gorgeous. I was like, so let's, what would we be there? What would we do there? Because we literally have the chance. They bulldozed it. So we can put anything we want to. And so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to reimagine here the hub, which I don't even think that's what it's called. Um, of Epcot that's been under construction since 1964. So there you go. Three different dates worth of construction. I'll let you figure out which one is correct. All of them are wrong. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll, I'll go, go first. I don't care if you want. <laughs> <Go> ahead, <laughs> They're all like, okay, like, can we just, okay. can ahead, we just end the show? Who wants to make stuff up first? <laughs> no, but this is, this is what I would do. Mine would be super simple. I obviously wouldn't put another fountain there because they just built the fantastically beautiful fountain at the front of Spaceship Earth. So we don't Ooh. need a fountain in the front and the fountain Ooh, in the back. I know, Dave, I know Dave is partial to fountains. Rob is partial to fountains. But I wouldn't have a fountain. This is what I would do. I would build some sort of structure that involved way less plants that would introduce you think about where this area goes right this area leads us to the world showcase so i would build an experience after you leave spaceship earth and you travel into the you know they tell you on spaceship earth obviously about this world that we live in i would make an exit right now the exits to spaceship earth are out the side which takes you to guest services and now the bathroom over there right so that's not exciting i'd make the exit to spaceship earth <laughs> to this area this area like leads us into the world showcase there are exhibits not necessarily exhibits uh interactive kiosks there are uh things that showcase what to expect as you enter the world, there could be water features, not necessarily fountains, but there could be water features in this area. But to me, it's more of an introduction. Going back to that educational piece, it's more of an introduction into what to expect as you enter the world showcase. So like there's costuming. There is uh, photos of the, the things you're coming to expect. Because uh, as you get there, you got Canada and Mexico. So bring in some things that lead you into these areas. So to me, it could probably stay landscaped, right? I don't know that we need something super attraction-y there. I just think it needs to be something that transitions us from the future, right? The future's on the exterior of that. Spaceship Earth, you go over to uh, Guardians and Mission Space, and then over on the other side, you have the Land Pavilion. Those can stay where they are. I just think we need something that transitions us into what we're going to experience in the World Showcase. So that's what I would do. I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change it terribly. There's still going to be, it's still going to be a chill area, right? Because Epcot to me is more of a chill park. It's not, I don't need thrill rides. I don't need all of that stuff. So to me, it's educational and it's just educating me from Spaceship Earth into the World Showcase. That's what I would do. And it doesn't cost okay. a lot of money. So Dave should like it. Lame. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Brent. I like the concept of, you know, be, like if you go through Spaceship Earth and it's the exit, you don't go through spaceship earth you're still forced to go through that area so that's like the main flaws of the, the entrance like i like that see to me though i would not you'd have to experience spaceship earth in order to access this <clears throat> area 
the other paths, you know, the ones they open during construction, they would still lead people around. And you could come to the back of the area and eventually get to it. But to fully experience it, I think you would have to exit from Spaceship Earth. You'd have an uprising on your hands. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> imagine <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's what I got. Okay, Rob, what do you got? So right off the top of my head, the Mickey, you know, the <laughs> Mickey and Friends experience where you do the, which is actually really good. I actually have done that a couple times where you meet Mickey, you meet uh, Goofy, you know, you meet the the usual suspects. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna mix this area up. I'm gonna do two areas too. I'm gonna do a mystery meet and greet. And a retro restaurant. Those are going to be my two areas there. So hold, get, bear with me here. The mystery meet and greet. You go in, you get in line, and then you go into a room, you turn the corner, and there's a mystery character there. It's not Mickey. It's not Minnie. You know how like they have the obscure characters? You know how like you have to wait 15 hours to see Jack Skelton and Sally? Maybe they'll be there. Maybe they won't, you know? But they'll just they'll mix it up with all different characters, seasonal, all that different stuff. You don't really get to pick. You go there, and you get to meet the characters. I think that's it. That's a genius idea. I just came up with that off the top of my head. So, <laughs> so the mystery Epcot's the Communicore mystery meet and greet. That's that's my idea number one. And number two, right next to it in that area there, it's going to be a retro restaurant. I always think to myself, they have all this cool stuff. They just throw it away. Like why are they throwing it away? Like bu- like Buzzy and the dinosaurs and you know. The robot from Horizons, it's it's somewhere over there, you know, like it's all of Epcot's past in this restaurant. So you go in and it's going to be, you know, like what was the, um, what was it? Epcot forever. Was that the, the preview thing that they had that that was in the restaurant? Yeah. Yes. Bring that element in there. Like I always love these, like I always talk about the Mandalorian and the things that film like those Mm -hmm. 360 video screens, you sit in that restaurant. And they show clips and rides and clips of the old Disney past. And it's just a retro uh, restaurant. And then it's kind of like Planet Hollywood. They'll have like all those artifacts from World of Motion and Horizons and all that. You guys know me. I'm the retro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, Just a retro thing. So Dave let go. I'm not letting go. I'm one of retro restaurant. That's what I want. I love it. So. And is this going to be quick movie. service or sit down, Rob? Uh, quick service or sit down? You know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to do one better, Brandon. It's going to be both. One sex wow. is quick service. <laughs> one service is sit down. So, well, what are we going to do here, Rob? We've got we've got the new Connections Cafe. And are we just are we bulldozing that and putting something no, else no, there? No, you could keep the Connections Cafe. You know. So in that nice open area where you can walk through, you're just going to put another building. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> where the Communicore <laughs> Hall is, whatever there. That's where I want to put the retro. Yeah, why don't we dump Communicore Plaza, build you a building right there, and you can have your retro Thank themed. You. Thank you. Everything. Yeah, and then you keep the um, landscaping in the middle so you don't anger the environmentalists. Lord have mercy. I thought of a third idea too that we're talking. Uh oh. Remember Uh-oh. In, remember they're gonna open up that um that David Copperfield magic restaurant? <laughs> Let's bring that concept back to oh put that underground. That'd be cool. <laughs> I ladies just and gentlemen, this out of nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Rob is not allowed to do reimagineer it while drinking Corona. Adam, this is why we stopped. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's fun. Nah, I threw that one in. Sorry, I like it. Mine, so we mine got a mystery, awful. mystery meet and greet, retro restaurant, and David Copperfield magic. This is Has why anybody... I love. This is why I love reimagineering. <laughs> but let me ask you this: Has anybody been able to hear anything past the words "mystery meat"? <laughs> <laughs> and then he adds "and greet," but I'm still hung up on. Did he just say "mystery meat"? He mystery, said "mystery, mystery meat" a lot. Is that, are like you going to serve times. that at your we retro restaurant? Title. We have a show title. <laughs> He's going to have Rob's going to have mystery meat at his retro restaurant. <laughs> oh man. Oh, Gosh, man, man, mine sucks. <laughs> see, that's what, see I, that's what Brandon goes all out. I'm always crazy, but but David always like he'll admit he's not right <laughs> right up from the front. <laughs> no, I just don't think it's great. Like because it's okay. I, it's my reimagineering. I get to reimagine it. All right, here we go. Yeah. So I would put a fountain back um, because I don't know why. I just think that like it I'm was there great. forever. 
Um, so I think everybody's fallen asleep already. Okay. And so what I would do is at night, I would do like a five minute show every 20 minutes. Now, I know that could possibly contradict what's going on on Spaceship Earth at night every 15 to 20 minutes, but this is my reimagineer it, and I'm going to do it. I'm not going to have a mystery meet and greet. Okay, so <laughs> that's what I would do to add. Now, Thanks. one of the things that was also super cool about that area was from time to time on the back side, or I guess on the closer to the uh world showcase side there was that stage where like all kinds of things would happen they would have like legit acts i remember they had that like acapella group that was kind of current that would come there from time to time um i liked that like make that an area that has like some entry entry entertainment um with all of your new shade options that you've added. And it looks like the picture that we're actually going by this, everybody, it's kind of, it's kind of tough. I think this was a screenshot of a screen and there was glare on. So if, if you're looking at this from above and you're looking, if North is where spaceship earth is on the across, like right out in front of creation shop, I think there looks to be like a little body of water there. I think. Like, I can't really tell. They just, it looks like a bunch of lotus flowers. That's honestly what the drawing <laughs> looks like. I'm like, are those just the big umbrellas for like shade? But then, like, across from Journey of Water, this looks, there's a circular thing with four. Like, I just don't know what this drawing is trying to show us, but I think that there's water there. So that could feature that little fun thing. Cause here I am fiscally responsible. Let's keep it like inexpensive based on what's already going yep. there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would just, I would, I would, I would re-enter, reintroduce like some cool entertainment there. And I would do something like I would do another little water show, which some people are going to be like, Dave, literally 86 paces away <laughs> is a brand new water feature area in the park. I don't care. Expanded. I haven't experienced that, that yet. And we don't even know if it's going to be cool at night. That's just all I'm going to say. Um, and then I would read. Yeah, I would. The Communicore Plaza, I would push that right into the lagoon <laughs> i would build another building there and house that with and bring back some of the retro stuff like rob was talking yeah. about like, Thank you. so you want yeah. looks like mickey and friends are coming back in the area where they were and then communicore hall is going to be like i think rob said it earlier but it's going to be for festivals or special events i bet you when they do like the arts festival part they're going to have like where you could remember back in we, as a pass holder you could make a pass holder special shirt and like it would be done you come back and pick it up in a couple hours yeah. merch for every different thing like it'd be a great way to bring that inside um but yeah put another building there and put a whole bunch of like how about like the history of epcot like just run that all through it yeah. i don't know that's I'm, that's so kind just, of my lame ideas they just fill in a building full of walls is that what your idea is the history of epcot <laughs> Yes, just the, the different much. walls that they use, and we could start yeah. it off when, when they first built them, and all the animated characters that are on the walls were like in full color. Now they're faded and all like blue and green because <laughs> they've been out in the sun for forty-seven years. Yeah, <laughs> if you've been, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Dave. I, I mean, I joke, but I like this idea. I think that a Bellagio style fountain show, a mini world of color kind of show could be awesome for epcot because yes you have right. you you do have the the light thing on the of the ball you got epcot forever plus whatever this new show is but epcot's usually open late right like epcot right. in the summertime is open till 11 12 o'clock at night the the nighttime spectacular is over by 9 15 so this right. is a way you know at at night epcot becomes like world showcase shenanigans right like drink around the world people are back there this is a way to draw people to the front of the park uh mm -hmm. and give them a little something entertaining and like you said it doesn't have to be a 20 minute show like a quick little five minute right lights music it can incorporate some sort of crazy light show on spaceship earth that goes along with that i i'm getting more on board with this it could be epcot's about. version of the long kiss goodnight Yes. A nice little surprise at the end of the night as you're exiting the park. 
Which they've kind of done that with the, with Spaceship Earth. I get it. I get it. I am assuming that's continuing. Yes. Are those still happening? I haven't or heard anything about going away. I haven't heard anything okay. about it going away. So hopefully so. But yes, I agree. I'm with you, Dave. I think all of these ideas were fantastic. Yeah, and the in and the entertainment feature. I liked having those little groups there that would and you remember way back in the day when they had people like those uh they used to have them at, at uh oh my gosh downtown disney i can't, I can't ever think of anything anymore disney, disney Springs. Spring. uh remember they had the people that were like all dressed up like statues and they would be frozen they even oh, did yeah. that for one of the um uh, festivals i think it was a festival the arts one dude was dressed up like a rocket guy and, and it was like oh yeah but, i mean that's an area to, to kind of do that kind of fun and different unique stuff that would be like specific to epcot and that little area i mean it is the like hub it. right it is the hub of epcot I like it. I like it. I like it too. You know, right, I was thinking too, like I, I'm, I want to build on Dave's if that's all right. Like that area yeah. could be like, you know, like you, you see Main Street with uh, Happily Ever After, the way the Main Street has the projections around. It kind of bring uh, another world in, like. And then I'm thinking, I love. I had to look it up because the Disney Animation Building in California Adventure. When you walk into that thing, it has the three different attractions in it, mm -hmm. and it just opens up, and it's like. Pinocchio or like Cinderella and like projections everywhere and it projects on the floor. If you go to a hockey game too, they put it on the ice, like the projection stuff like that. That'd kind of be cool. Like just different environments. Like it, like you said, it's like, it's like uh, the thing at the, like at the end of the night, it's like the kiss goodbye, but like you're walking out and you're, you're in the Pinocchio scene. You're in the, you know, Zootopia scene. You're in like anything. You know what I mean? I wanted to build on that with that idea. But. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, you're cool giving me. A... Go ahead, Brandon. No, sorry, sorry. I was saying you're giving me ideas, Rob. Like if you've ever been to Kennedy Space Center, I don't know if you've been to Kennedy Space Center down here, but you go into this theater and you watch this like movie about space and space shuttles and things like that. And at the end, like they put the space shuttle on the screen, but at the end, mm. it opens right, and the real space shuttle is there. Oh yeah. So like. Imagine if you came out of Spaceship Earth, right? And you stood there. There's a little theater. It plays like a two-minute movie. And then it opens to like this beautiful hub area with all of this craziness. Like like the big reveal. I like that. Like the big reveal. Again, yeah. you have to experience Spaceship Earth in order to experience this. And I see that, that brings more people to Spaceship Earth. Because I think it, Spaceship Earth when they get the air conditioning back in it is a very underrated attraction. It always has like a five minute wait, but I think that there's some cool things you could do. And I think if you made the exit into this new area, Epic, more people would want to experience it. Huh. I like that. There we go. Three. As soon as I poo poo my idea, everybody comes up with like good additions to my yeah. idea. So thank you. See, see, Dave, you always, you always doubt yourself, but you always come through with like the good, the best idea. Yeah, definitely. Thomas the doubter. Thomas the doubter. So there you go, Adam. That was a kind of a mini reimagineering. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Adam, I'll send you the twenty bucks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you got him to do it again. Rob's just been tweeting people. Can you please ask him when we're doing reimagining? <laughs> just send it to him. Here's the email. Another Disney podcast at gmail.com. I'm going to send it. They'll have to include me. Because <laughs> I've come up with an idea. They're like, oh, that was reimagining. We're not doing that. Like, oh, that's reimagining. Like, a couple times I gave up with it, but thanks. I owe the money. <laughs> we'll bring it back. Those are fun. Well, we, we, here's what we need to do we need to compile a list first. And then that way, when you're like, okay, cool, we've got like 10 shows now, five shows now, we can do it, and that'll take us like half a year. There you go. And that's Boom. a dedicated show. It's not part of this show, right? Correct. Yeah. Gotcha. Correct. Correct. Sweet. Sweet. And they Sweet. were short. They were like 30 minutes, right? They were pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. They were all like 30. Yeah. I guess they're listening. Right. They're good. I like it. I'm going to think of them right now. I'm going to think of more now. Okay. All right. Well, that was fun. I think that does it. This is a good show. I, I think that I think that did it. Yeah, I wanted to bring up the uh, Disney at the box office too. Like we talked about that. A couple yeah, yeah, weeks, yeah. You know? And uh, Elemental is actually like it's a slow burn. It's like it's a hit, four hundred fifty nine million dollars, and it's it came out on home uh, home digital like last week. So it's kept going, but they still released it, which is crazy. But Indiana Jones, 
barely made anything. It's pretty sad when they say three hundred seventy-eight million. When you say barely made anything, but I think it cost three hundred million to make, and that comes out Tuesday on, on digital home video, which is awesome. Like you get on Apple TV or uh, Amazon or you know that kind of stuff. And to answer your question earlier, Haunted Mansion's been out 26 days. It made 86 million. So, and it's kind of not in the theaters because I didn't see it. I was trying to go see yeah, it. Yeah, it was. It was very. Didn't do that for me, so. How much did it cost to make, or did it? I it don't say? know the budget. I don't know the budget on that. So I'm on box office mojo. I just don't see the budget. So they don't have it. So bummer. But I'm not surprised. I mean, that's yeah. a that's a Homer movie, right? How much, Brandon? Brandon's muted. You're muted. You muted yourself. Sorry, I'm really stupid. Uh, it cost 150 million. Okay, so they'll get they'll get there, I guess. I guess. I don't know. Yes. What about was that domestically or internationally that it? Oh, oh, domestically 59 million, international okay, so 26 is. million, and total worldwide was 86 million and change. Okay. Nice net loss. It's a good start. It's a, I mean, it's a good start. I think I think it'll it'll pick up steam, much like Elemental did. So, but it'll go to Disney Plus, right? Will they do? Will they make yeah. any money off of once it goes to their own platform? Do they really they make money? Content. They need content. Yeah. <laughs> All good. All right, I love it. This was great. Fantastic. This was fun. fun. Yeah. Should be good. Is is that it? Is are we going to our? I think that's time? it. I think I think I think before we go, we do have to wish Dave a safe journey. Yeah, safe trip. Safe journey, because Dave will be traveling water. to the other side of the world. Yes. So we wish you a safe journey of water. Safe journey, Dave. But right. me and Brandon are going to do a show on our own. Let's see how we do. Journey into. <laughs> I'm going on a journey into imagination. It's gonna be. It's it's going to be. Something. It's gonna be it's me. Good. Tune in. It's going to be something. I know I will. <laughs> I hit a milestone on my channel, too. I wanted to kind of promote. Oh, I, I did see 6, that. 6,000 6, subscribers and 1.5 million views. 1.5 this million week, views. Yeah, it's Congrats, crazy. Dude. So I'm really happy. So Rob Fuzz, R O B F U Z. Rob Fuzz. Check me out. Rob yeah. to the Fuzz. Rob right. to the Fuzz. All right. Thanks. Until next Fun time. Fun times, gents. Until next time. Mystery meet and greet. <laughs> <laughs> Bicycle! Peace! Oh, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs>